Hello, welcome everyone to another <clears throat> financial analysis uh, video uh, from myself, Moe Damin, and my colleague, Ted Wainman. Uh, and today we're looking at uh, Fastly. Um, so, and the reason why is um, because of uh, the internet outages that companies have experienced recently, uh, because of the uh, downtime with one of its competitors, Akamai. So if I give you an example, you know, what does Fastly do? Essentially, they, are, uh, they provide CDN uh, networks or services. It is a, a content delivery networks. And basically think of content delivery as a, a group of geographically dispersed servers that when they work together um, will enable uh, companies to have uh, faster content um, downloads, loading times. So think of faster, uh, faster website, um, website loading, um, you know, images, videos, etc. So plenty of companies rely on these types of businesses to be able to deliver fast content to their customers, their viewers, etc. Um, and fastly work. <clears throat> with several companies, one of which is ByteDance, which owns TikTok, <clears throat> and they're a big part of their revenue. So there's an, a small element there of, um, you know, customer concentration risks that uh, that's to be considered. So we're going to look into this business today. We're going to look at its finances. Its stock price has moved quite a bit. Uh, they, um, <clears throat> they went public in May 2019 at around $23, and they currently sit around 40 $49. Um, so you would have made some money, but it's gone through a, quite a bit of fluctuation in that time. And it's reached a peak at once, uh, a one period of $126. So certainly not for the faint hearted. And we're going to look into this business uh, shortly with uh, in terms of their finances, you know, what are in, and why investors are probably thinking the way they are, but we'll give you that snapshot. Now, remember, before we do so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you have any companies that you would like for Ted and I to analyze, uh, do leave a note in the comment section below and we will do so. This particular one isn't, but uh, we have been regularly doing so. So leave your notes in the comment section below. Uh, so Ted, what have we found out about the finances for this business? And remember, we're just looking at the finances, right? We're not, we're not analyzing all the other things that are critical for your investment thesis or whether you're researching this company to do business with them we're just looking at the financials fundamental financial analysis here uh ted really interested to see what we share what we found out hi moe yeah thank you very much so um uh, good to see you again and you're absolutely right we're going to dive into the financial performance of this business we're going to look at their financial statements which were on their website here it is the form 10k um and we're going to uh, shoot down through all of the notes in the accounts uh, all the way through to the financial performance. Uh, so we look at for the profit and loss account, which is on page 91 of their accounts. Now we're doing a very quick and fast and furious review of these accounts in about 15 minutes, um, which means that we're not going to go into a huge amount of detail. Um, as you mentioned, if you're doing a fundamental valuation or fundamental analysis of this company, you'd want to go through all of the notes in the accounts as well. You want to read all the information and you need to look at, you know, the, the other things going on, understand the market, the other players, et cetera, et cetera. So let's jump straight in. Here we see uh, the information. This is for uh, the year ended 31st of December 2020. Uh, and we are dealing in dollars in thousands. So their revenue, this is the top line, is $290 million, $290 million uh, revenue. The cost of the revenue, $120 million, leaving them with a gross profit of $171 million. That's about a 60% gross margin. And that's a very similar story to the previous year. Now, we see here, First of all, look at the top line growth, uh, massive growth year on year. So certainly from 2019 to 2020, that's a 45% increase in revenue. So this company is growing and it's growing very, very rapidly. Um, and it's maintaining its gross margin. And that's a pretty healthy gross margin of 60%. Okay, so that is looking good. However, the 
costs of running the business are high, resulting in this loss from operations. And what we see is that as the company is growing, so that loss is also growing. So what have we got here? We've got the SG and sorry, the, the GNA, the general and administrative. So this is all the kind of you know back office. HR, these are the technicians, this is the kind of you know, cost of, uh, of, of setting up and running the business. Um, sales and marketing is very, very big. So you could argue here, so that's a very badly drawn um, uh, uh, arrow. Um, so the sales and marketing number here is increasing and you could start to kind of relate that. Is that related to the revenue? I Are they only generating the more revenue because they're investing in more sales and marketing costs? And then also we've got the R&D costs, $75 million. That's a huge amount. And that's very much investing in the future. So, you know, what we're trying to get to here is, you know, the question is, when does this company start to break even? When does it start to return on the profitability? Um, it's accelerating. It's growing. Uh, $290 million, $91 million is, is, a, is a fairly sizable top line. You know, what does that number have to be before it starts to put some decent uh, profitability on the bottom line and translate that? And, and uh, you know, effectively, you know, does the research and development, is it a fixed cost? Do they stay there? Sales and marketing, do they need to hire more salespeople or do they maintain that level? Uh, do they um, need more uh, GNA or do they maintain that as well? So what we see here is the fixed costs uh, have also been increasing year on year. Uh, and we'd hope that those fixed costs would start to kind of certainly not increase so rapidly, allowing economies of scale to kick in and start to get a profit down here. So loss at the moment, $107 million. Uh, we'll notice that there's a little bit of interest uh, on uh, there down from the previous year that suggests that the debt has come down. So it looks like they have some debt, but they have less debt than they used to. Uh, and we will look at the balance sheet to see if we can confirm that. Um, otherwise, uh, a little bit of a tax credit um, coming back uh, to them uh, and they end up with a $95 million uh, loss. Uh, uh, increased from $51 million the previous year and $31 million. So this is a company, uh, they have been making losses. Okay, so there's our income statement. Let's go and have a look at the balance sheet. Uh, and here, here is the balance sheet. Um, now, the first thing we notice with this company on the balance sheet, so we're looking at uh, the, the, the current assets up at the top. So these current assets, these are things that we own, which are either cash or going to become cash soon. And what jumps out to me is the amount of cash. And when we talk about cash, we're using these two numbers together. We've seen these marketable securities before. These are effectively bonds. And this is a way of a company just parking surplus cash. So they have got you know, just shy of $200 million in cash sitting on the balance sheet, which is good. Um, not quite as much as, uh, in fact, an increase on the previous year of uh, uh, 100, what's that, $130 million. Um, so the cash has gone up, loss making cash has gone up. They've probably been raising finance. We'll see that um, a little bit later on. So pretty strong. Uh, Pretty strong uh, cash position there. So uh, there's no kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a red line, no kind of wall of, of, of impending doom. Um, we also notice down here in the bottom part of the balance sheet, there's a big increase in um, uh, uh, going on here. So a big increase in the total assets of almost a billion dollars. And one of the main reasons for that is um, first of all, we've got this uh, this right of use uh, asset. So this is just an accounting adjustment. Uh, if you lease a photocopier in the previous year, you just chose it. You showed it as a kind of a rent of that photocopier, and in this year, you actually show the photocopier on the balance sheet and the uh, corresponding lease liability. However, the, the big number jumping out at us is this one here: goodwill. Okay, the goodwill has increased significantly, which suggests that this company. So part of the increase has been that they have acquired another business. They are growing through acquisition rather than growing organically. Um, so let's uh, look at the bottom half of the balance sheet. Here it is. Um, and we see the, uh, so first of all, the, the current liabilities. Um, these are the things that we have to pay soon. 
Um, and we noticed that the current liabilities when compared to the current assets is no problems. You remember they've got at least $200 million um, of cash. They owe 94 million, so liquidity is not an issue for these guys. Um, here are the finance lease liabilities we mentioned earlier, um, and there's gonna be some long-term finance lease liabilities as well. So that's the kind of contra to the, uh, the, that photocopier I showed you in the, um, uh, in the assets. Um, and then um, uh, the, 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 uh, we also see um, uh, other long-term liability, uh, let me make sure I'm on the um, right. So, so these are the lease, uh, these are the lease um, uh, uh, operating lease liabilities. Um, and what we notice here quite interestingly is that the debt um, has fallen, okay? So the debt has come down to zero. Effectively, they've paid off their debt. Now that would have happened during the year. So if you remember when we looked at the interest rate, um, or sorry, the interest they were paying, it was about 5 billion uh, in 2020, uh, down to 1.5 billion in 2021. By the end of 2020, 2021, they have no debt at all. Uh, and therefore um, we would expect them to be paying no interest later on. So that's good um, for a loss making company, no debt um, uh, makes it a lot safer. Sorry, just to change there. So uh, what Ted meant was uh, 5 billion in 2019 and then down to 1 billion in 2020. Sorry, yeah, what did I, what did I say? Uh, 2020 and 2021. Oh, right, so yeah, two, yeah so 2019, yeah. So two, uh, there's 2019, um, there's the 5 billion, uh, there's the 1.5 billion in 2020. Yeah, that's my mistake. Uh, I've got my, um, uh, my uh, uh, notes, I've got the wrong headings on them. Okay, so, so the interest is coming down. Uh, the interest, the, the, the company is going uh, effectively debt free um, uh, and uh, uh, is now equity funded. Uh, here is the equity, pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, we notice that it is really all funded through um, uh, raised capital. Um, that's about $1.35 billion. Um, they're sitting on losses, um, but they've got a nice, healthy, strong, uh, positive balance sheet. Uh, so lots of cash, uh, a big investment. It is goodwill, so it's not going to, you know, it's not something you can touch. Um, uh, but they do have this sort of this this, this big investment, um, which is all looking uh, reasonably reasonably healthy if they can actually start to turn it around. Um, so uh, movement in equity is not so interesting because they're not paying any dividends because they're not making um, a profit. So we'll skip over that part uh, into the cash flow. Um, and here we see the cash flow. So these guys, they are burning cash. Okay, so we see the cash burn um, is uh, about 20 billion. There it is. This is uh, the net cash used in operating activities um, down from 31 billion. So that's a good sign that we've got a company here where um, uh, the, you know, the, the loss um, has increased, um, yet the cash burn is coming down, which is good. So they're actually um, uh, only burning 20 billion of cash. And if you've got 200 uh, million in, sorry, 20 million of cash, if you've got 200 million in the bank and you're burning 20 million a year, you can do that for 10 years. Um, so going concern is not an issue for these guys. Um, you'll notice uh, uh, there's quite a lot of stock based compensation going on here. So this is the cost to the business in terms of what they're paying to their staff, but it alleviates the cash so the staff are being incentivized um uh, uh to you know to, to, to really you know turn this company around and um uh, and generate um uh, the profits that we uh, require and the um the share performance um that investors require so it's always good to have the employees um aligned with the um uh, uh the employees aligned with the um uh, investors um this next section um this is all about the uh, the investing um, now, we need to be careful here because um, these top two lines, uh, in fact, these top three lines is all about investing in marketable securities, which is not really investment. As we talked about earlier, it's about where we park cash. So when we look at this business, we should be really discounting this part uh, of the uh, investment activities and really what we're focusing on. So if we just cross these bits out and ignore these bits, because it's just um, you know, depositing money in a, in, a, in a savings account and then taking that money out of a savings account, that's kind of the way we, we, we treat that. Um, and therefore, what we're really interested in is this amount here. So there's 200, 201 million, which is the acquisition of the business. And if you remember, we observed that because that gave rise to the goodwill on the balance sheet. So they're investing 200 million in, um, uh, in, in, a, in a new business. 
Um, and then down the bottom, we've actually got the financing, um, uh, how this business is being financed. Um, and here we see the proceeds from, so we've got the, the share issue here. So here's the an initial public offering, the IPO um, uh, raised about 200 million. Uh, and then we've got a follow on public offering raising another 275 million. Um, and what we see here is that, you know, lots of debt is being, so the debt is being paid down. So some of that, so some of the money that's been raised has been used to repay the debt. Some of it has been used uh, in order to buy this business. And some of it has been just basically parked into um, our cash account uh, to fund the future of the business and maybe any potential future acquisitions if that's what they intend to do. So there's the kind of, you know, looking at the, uh, you know, a, a quick whistle stop tour of the business. There's nothing else that really jumps out at us um, uh, from, the, from that analysis. Um, so if we go back to our, um, uh, uh, and look at the share price and the market valuation, as you said, um, the, uh, the price has been bouncing around quite a lot, Come, currently on a market cap of 5.8 uh, uh, billion. Um, so 5.8 billion, um, uh, well, there's no P ratio because there's no E. Um, that's uh, a 5.8 billion on a balance sheet uh, of about 1 billion. Okay, so that's a kind of, you know, 450% premium. Um, there's about 5 billion of uh, a goodwill, 4.8 billion of goodwill um, in there, which actually doesn't seem that unreasonable. You know, there's a, it's a pretty strong balance sheet sitting behind a company. Um, it's, it's valued on 20 times sales. Um, that sounds quite toppy to me, maybe. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it, you know, it's loss making. Uh, they've got to get the story right on, you know, they've got to turn this, turn this and start generating uh, profits. Um, and I think that's really the challenge. But the challenge there is not, you know, they're running at a, at a really strong margin. 60% a gross margin is great. Um, they've got to get the, you know, the sales uh, and, and marketing. Um, uh, you know, that seems high. The R&D is also high, but then, you know, it's a competitive field and they need to, you know, they need to invest in the, in the future. The G&A looks pretty high to me as well. Maybe there's an opportunity to bring that down. Certainly, I think what they need to do is they start to stabilize, turn those fixed costs into fix, grow that top line, prove that they can uh, uh, bring this company to uh, profitability um, and start to justify um, uh, uh, those, those valuations. Right, so there you have it, everyone. So it's a fast growing company, great margins, uh, but it is running at a loss. They do have cash, so they've got some run rate there. Uh, but how soon can they turn the story into a, a net profitability business? Um, and, uh, you know, if you're interested, you know, you might want to look at the finances of other companies that they uh, in this sector. So Akamai is a very big one. Uh, it's quite an established business. It's one of the largest, I think, in this space. And then another company called Cloudfare, right? So you can have a look at those businesses as well. But of course, if you want us to analyze those companies for you, do leave a note in the comment section and we will certainly do so. Uh, Ted, thank you very much. And uh, until, the, until the next video, we'll see you guys later on. Again, please don't, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Okay, see you later, Moe.